a natural extension of user-defined functions is uh, plugins. Uh, Maxima, like Maxima websites and Maxima documentation, as far as I know, never actually use the word plugin, but it's a fitting description of the load command, uh, in my opinion. Maxima, whether you're using WX Maxima or the vanilla Maxima, comes with several plugins, and the manual talks about them. Let's see if I can pull over the manual. Um, let me zoom out so you can see it more easily. So if you go over to all this stuff here, here's a bunch of plugins. Here's a fractals plugin, um, linear algebra plugin, uh, simplex plugin, simplification plugin, all these kinds of plugins. So um, it comes with a lot that the manual will talk about. And let's say, for example, I want to use some finance commands. So I just um, go ahead and go to this finance plugin, and I could also just as easily, um, you know, do a Control F search for finance. And I have this future value. Um, function, but to use it, it says that note that before using the functions defined in this package, you have to load it writing load finance. So here, let me zoom in now that I. So I want to use this future value function, but to do that, I need to load finance. So let's go ahead and say, load finance. So now I've loaded the finance package. And yeah, now I want to use this future value. And let's go ahead and use this example. I'll go ahead and just copy paste it. So now I can use this function. See, before it, before I loaded the finance um, package, I couldn't use this function. Now I can. So I can find the future value. Um, and uh, let's take a look at what this actually says. We can find, we can calculate the future value of a pres of a present one given a certain interest rate. Rate is the interest rate, PV is the present value, and num is the number of periods. So here's rate, present value, and number of periods. So what I'm about to, what I just copied and about to type it, what I'm about to evaluate, is going to say um, here is the present value after three years at 12% interest per year. What's the value going to be? Uh, at least I think that's what future value is. I, I I actually don't remember much about. I had a class on that, but I don't remember anything about it. So it's going to be fourteen hundred dollars about after we're done with that. So um, that is one example of a um, of a of a plugin. Here's another one. This one I actually use quite a bit. So it's the simplex package. I'll go ahead and just to so you know what I'm talking about, go to the simplex part of the manual. Okay, so here's the simplex package. This does linear programming for me. So I can use the maximize LP, minimize LP, and uh, we, I'm not going to go into, I'm not going to read everything here, but I will say that in one of my other videos, I have a, um, it's it's called a quick tips video, it's about how to use the simplex method, so let's call, say this is always on. So now that we have this, this uh, load simplex method, we can use this, we can solve this uh, linear linear programming problem using this simplex package. So I could say maximize LP max max Ah oh, okay, I knew there's something wrong there. Maximize LP um and the syntax um if you can look at the manual to if you don't believe me, but I'll first enter the function that I'm maximizing 20 times x1 plus 50 times x2 and now I put in brackets all of my um, uh, what's the word? conditions so we have negative 0.2 times x1 plus 0.8 times x2 less than zero we don't need to be concerned about the less than or equal to because um, linear programming problems are always less than or equal to so the command just only cares about the less than so then the next 
one's going to be two x one plus four times x two is less than two hundred forty. And then there's the oh also well, I forgot this last one. X one is less than one hundred. So there's also the negative non negativity constraints and, and we could we could put that in here if we wanted to, just as x1 greater than 0, x2 greater than 0. There's also a specific command for that. Um, uh, what was it? It's non, no negative, oh yeah, that's it. No negative LP equals true. Okay, and we then we evaluate that. And it gives us 2600 at x2 equals 20 and x1 equals 80. And if you watch the um, the quick tips video on... on on doing that example, you'll see that that's the same answer that I got there. So let's get that out of the way. And um, now, now we've seen how to use plugins. We've seen how to load them and use them. But how do we make them? Well, we've already made user-defined functions, and the types of plugins that we're going to make there's more than one type. But the types that we're going to make is really nothing more than just creating functions that we can load whenever we want to. So. I'm going to take the forward difference equation that I made in the previous video, and I'm going to turn it into a Maxima plugin. So I open a file explorer. Um, here is a file explorer. And I'm going to create a file. So create a document. And I'm going to call it fordiff.mac forward difference dot mac or just forward for diff dot mac um, the dot mac is because um, th this this is the extension that maxima recognizes as a plugin it tells maxima that it is a plugin and th it's mac because the uh, the old name for maxima I'll type it out here the old name for maxima was maxima spelled this way so this is kind of a holdover from that previous era so now I'm going to go ahead and open this in a text editor. And um, now I just go to the text editor and I type in the forward difference function that I had before. So for diff uh, f is defined as substitute um, x plus 1 in for x in f minus f. And this is a case where I cannot forget the semicolon at the end of the string. See, I'm not in WX Maxima right now. I'm just using a text editor, so I can't depend on it to fill the gaps, fill in the gaps for me. Uh, if I understand this correctly, this is what's called a script, and uh, it's going to be exactly like the type of thing that you would type into Maxima directly. And when you load this whenever you load this file Maxima just does all of these commands loading the functions in the memory so this is all I need to make the plugin this is all that's necessary to make a forward difference plugin but before I do that I want to do one more thing to this file someday I may look back on this file and it'll be kind of annoying to have to look through all this code and figure out what, what it's doing I mean for this one it's not so bad but for what if I have a really long plugin? I don't want to look through all that code. So I want to write in a comment on what this does. So I'm going to write in this right here. So I'm going to do forward slash star. This function takes the forward difference of the function f. And then star slash. So this um, the, this forward slash star, anything that's between these two, Maxima knows that's a comment. That means that we're not going to evaluate it. It's it's whenever Maxima sees that, it skips over it. So this will do nothing more than say, okay, now we can type in whatever we want here, and later on, um, we can use this to um, to let us know what we're doing at this point in the in the code. So now let's go ahead and save it and load it. So I'll save it and then I'll close this. And I have the location is going to be at home Andrew Maxima forward difference dot Mac. So I'll go ahead and uh, make this always on top. And then that way we can have this. So I want to load. And I put in quotes home Andrew 
maxima for diff dot mac. So now I've loaded home Andrew Maxima slash uh, for diff dot mac. Notice that I have never actually anywhere so far defined forward difference. Although actually I just I just realized I might have. Let's go ahead and restart Maxima to make that drive that point home. So now I've I have not actually defined forward difference anywhere here. So now I can do for diff oops, of x squared. And it gives me the forward difference of x squared. And of course, again, I can simplify this to 2x plus 1. So I try it, and it works. So we know that it's done correctly. But what if I want to load it by just typing in the name of the file? Remember up here, I just did load simplex. I didn't say load and then type in the location of the simplex.mac file. I just said load simplex. Uh, to do that, I need to put it in a folder where Maxima will look at it. Well, w I need to put it in a folder where Maxima will look for it. In Linux, and I'll get to Windows in just a second, in Linux that folder is um, user share Maxima 5.20.1 share contrib. So um, that's obviously kind of long. Uh, and you actually need super user privileges to copy a file here. So it, I th actually think that in the case of Linux, it's a little bit easier to just load the folder from the home directory anyway. You don't have to. I mean, I guess you can, if you're a Linux user, there's a chance you're savvy enough to figure out how to write a script that would use super user privileges anyway. But what about Windows? So whenever so I just copy that well before I get to that I'll just copy the see you can see that there's already a bunch of built-in functions built-in um, plugins already um, and you know if you're curious you can take a look at some of these and see some some pretty impressive um, uh, programming like let's take a look at one randomly Im implicit diff I don't know what that is but we'll see that it's um, Subroutine implicit derivatives, oh, of course, of multiplayer variable expressions. That's kind of cool. And um, so here's some impressive programming. I, I don't even know what this is. I've never seen it before. Um, but it's it's beyond me. I don't. It take me a while to figure out how to do something like that. So once I have copied the .mac file here, uh, I can just load it by hitting load, like the simplex one. I think we can find the simplex. Oh, actually, that's it from a folder from here. Uh, so that means that we can just go ahead and put it here and hit load and it will come up naturally. If you're in Windows on the other hand, uh, there's two things about Windows. First of all, it's going to be okay, this this you know, this stuff here is just the drive. This is the Linux way if you're using Windows you you probably don't know what this means. And that's just the same thing as C colon slash um that's the way what what was there before before I erased it was the Linux way of saying a, a the C drive. So this is going to be the location of the um of the contrib folder. It's in program files. Uh if you're on a sixty four bit machine it'll be under program files x eighty six. Otherwise it'll just be program files. Maxima share maxima five point blah 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 share contrib. So if uh, I were using a Windows computer, and I often do, because um, this is this folder right here is from my Windows drive, my Windows partition. Um, so this um, I would probably if I were using Windows, I would probably just create a shortcut to this folder. And whenever I wanted to um, put a make a new plugin, I just copy over the MAC file over here. In Windows, you don't need super user privileges, so it's pretty easy to do it. Okay, that concludes the video on um, create on using and creating plugins. I will see you in the last video. The next video will be, should be the last one.